Okay, welcome to another lunar flight video. Yes, that's right. I said lunar flight, not orbiter. So last year I recorded several orbiter series over a period of about three or four months. And that was after having taken a six year break off of orbiter. So back around 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and that time frame, when I was just absolutely obsessed with orbiter, I mean, I was spending pretty much every waking hour messing around with orbiter. Uh, but occasionally I would also check out this lunar flight game that I found on, um, I don't remember what the platform was at the time, but it was some relatively obscure platform like Steam, but it wasn't Steam. Um, later on, I found out that the game had, in fact, moved over to Steam, so that's actually where I'm playing it through now. But I recently kind of was checking this game out again after not having really looked at it in seven years or so. And I've been having kind of fun messing around with this game again, so I thought I would just record a little bit of a video. I do remember that when I was uh, playing with Lunar Flight years and years and years ago, I did struggle with the controls a little bit, and I tried to remap the keyboard so that it was more like Orbiter. Uh, what I've actually found in my recent attempts is that if I use my um, GamePad, this is a similar layout to like the Xbox 360, but this one's, you know, PC compatible. I found that if I use this controller, uh, this game's way easier to play. Uh, it's just, it's like perfectly designed to work with, with this controller. So without any more blah 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 let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, so you can just free fly in this game, which means you don't have any purpose or anything. Uh, you just kind of maybe want to jump around from place to place. Uh, what I have down here in the lower left is this, this mini map. And there are four uh, bases <clears throat> in, this, in, this, in this area. Currently I'm landed at, it looks like Alpha or Base A. And then over here there's Base B. Over here there's Base C and down here there's Base D. And I believe by going, yeah, next, 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 I can toggle between those. So if I just want to, say, make a quick hop from one base to the other, I can choose the base I want to hop to and then click on Nav. And it will put that navigation information up. But what I find a little bit more interesting is to come into the missions. And you can there are, I believe, three types of missions. There's transport which is probably the simplest. Transport is to just transport some cargo from a, a source to a destination. So I, for example, I could transport cargo from the base that I'm at to one of the other bases. If I don't want to do that one, I can click next. Uh, mission number two, hopefully that's readable, is also a transport mission. Uh, mission number three is a data survey mission, which is pretty interesting. You fly your vessel to a particular location around the map and you just have to hover in place for a given amount of time. It's like five or eight seconds, something like that, to essentially collect data for that area and then fly it, fly somewhere else. And then finally, the other mission type is lost cargo. Uh, there will be a piece of cargo somewhere on the map and you will get the general vicinity of where it's at, but you don't know exactly where it's at. So you have to fly to that general vicinity and then use the ship's transponder to pinpoint where it's actually located. Then you pick up that cargo and fly it to the destination. So for starters, let's do a data survey. I just kind of, let's just do one of those. So I'm going to select mission three, and then I'm going to click accept. And now it tells me that I need to acquire data at survey, at a survey location. And now let me let me think about how to okay then i'm going to click select nav to put that information on the navigation so that i have some idea of where i'm going and then i'm going to click map and then the map also kind of shows me that it's going to be a bit north and west of alpha and i already have uh, completely fueled up my vessel and over here on the right i have these three f's these are additional fuel modules so in the event that i burn through my 1000 units of fuel that i have I can click F to replenish my fuel, although it doesn't give you all your fuel back. I think it's like 750, I don't remember, but you get quite a bit of it back. And then lastly, uh, if I need to, which I don't, but I can come through the shop here. So for example, I could, uh, I can come to items 
and I can buy more fuel, but you can only hold uh, three uh, action items, so I can't afford any more, or I can't hold any more fuel. And if I needed to repair, I can buy a repair module. And then if I finally, if I want to top up the fuel that I have in my vessel, which I'm already at 100%, I could just click here to go refuel. So with all that said, let's just go ahead and fly. Uh, to take off, I just press and hold the right uh, trigger, I believe this one's called. I don't know the names of all these buttons, but it's it's this one here. And um, I'll try to maybe describe the controls as I go. And I don't quite know which way I'm facing. Uh, it's a little hard to see on this map. I think I'm currently facing south, so I think I need to hover up and do a 180. So I'm going to press this button here to hover up and then use these bumper stops to do a in-place uh, yaw type of maneuver. So that's what we'll do. We'll press this one to hover up. Um, I must have hit something here. I think if you hit select, which I must have hit by mistake, it locks the engine. Yeah, so I must have hit select by mistake. So right now I'm just lifting up. And I get, again, I'm pretty sure I'm facing south. So I'm going to use this left bumper stop to uh, yaw the vessel around the other directions that I'm facing north. And, and then I can watch my V rate here in the middle of the screen just to make sure I'm still going up. Okay, yeah, I also forgot about that. So that also makes it more convenient. So rather than try to guess which way I need to go, I can just see that call out in the middle of the screen. And in this particular case, I can actually see the data survey location so I can just fly right to it. Now I can either uh, translate forward, which is what I'll do for now, and I can use the left stick for that. And I do find it a little, for me, it feels a bit backwards. I can probably remap it, but you push forward to go forward, which I suppose there's some intuition for that. But my brain wants to pull back to go forward because I feel like I'm, by pulling back, I'm thrusting out of the back and going forward, but it's the other way around. You push forward to go forward on the translation. And I'm just going to translate over to where you see that like green uh, sphere of sorts. And I need to get my lunar vessel inside of that sphere. And once I'm inside of it, then I think I have to click on the missions and I have to click collect data. That was one of the other things I struggled with a little bit when I did mess with this game for the brief amount of time that I did. Um, I didn't quite know how the, the UI worked. Um, but I've since pretty much figured it all out. I think I figured it out on my own. I don't really remember seeing anybody else's playthroughs that describe it. But I do remember, like, once I would get inside the sphere, I was like, okay, now what? I thought it would be, I thought it would just, like, automatically recognize that I was where I needed to be. So now I'm going to pull back to start, you know, removing some of that forward translation. Because like I always say in Orbiter, you know, whatever you put in, you have to take back out. And I'm going to start taking out that translation. And I'm getting pretty close to being, I think I'm going to overshoot it. Yeah, I'm going to overshoot that spot. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to back up because I was talking too much. And I can see my velocity um, just above the map area. So that helps me know what's going on. And then I'm also watching my V-rate. Now, if I press and hold, like give it just a little bit of pressure and then press select, you can see it'll lock my power. So that can help me uh, not have to constantly go back and forth. But I do have to watch my V-rate now because now you can see I'm hovering. This is a lot easier when I'm not talking. <laughs> So now I'm going to push forward translation again to cancel out that reverse translation. And the, I need to get a little bit to the left, I can see as well. And then essentially I just need to zero everything out so I can stay inside of that sphere. It's not too difficult, but talking and trying to press these buttons. So one thing I'm going to do now, I am going to try to zero out my, my V-rate a little bit. Which is easier said than done. So I should be pretty well inside that sphere, but I'm sinking. Okay. So I'm going to come over here to missions and hit acquire data. And now I just have to make sure I'm staying inside that sphere long enough to acquire all the data. 
looks like I'm starting to s sink out. I don't know, did I get it all? No, I didn't get it all yet. So I'm gonna have to click acquire data again. Yeah, that's the tricky part is that you have to stay, you know, you have to stay put long enough to acquire the data. You can't go too high, too low. All right, this time I got it all. So data acquired. So now I just need to return to the alpha base. So I'm gonna come to map and I'm gonna select the alpha base, it's already selected. So all I need to do now, I'm just gonna use the right bump stop again to, to basically do a 180. And then I'm gonna head back to alpha. And when I land at alpha, and again, one of the nicer things or perhaps a nice thing is that you don't have to necessarily guess which way to go because you have this big green circle here that tells you, you know, if, where the base is at that you're targeting. Now I can also rotate the vessel forward like this to kind of point the engines behind me and give it a little bit of thrust. Now since Alpha is pretty close, I don't want to do too much of that because then I'll end up going so fast that I'll overshoot the base. And just like an orbiter, we have a velocity vector so that circle that's moving, I want to make sure that that velocity vector is pointed at where I want to be going because just like an orbiter, wherever the velocity vector is pointing, that's where you're going. So right now, for example, I'm heading into the side of a mountain. So I wanna make sure that that velocity vector is high up enough above the horizon so that I know that I am, you know, going, uh, I'm gonna clear the side of the, of the cliffs, basically. Uh, there are external views, but I do really, really, really super duper crazy appreciate that you can fly everything in this game without ever using an external view. I believe it's, I believe like Orbiter, it's F1 to, it's either F1 or F2 to get the external view, um, but it doesn't toggle back and forth like it does in Orbiter. Like in Orbiter, it's just F1 for external, F1 for internal. And this one, I think it's something like F2 than F1 or maybe F1 then F2, I can't remember. But I'll try to do that really quick just to show. Yeah, so F2 gives me that external view, and then F1 brings me back inside, so that's a little bit different. I can probably remap that if I wanted to. Again, I can do all this more quickly if I'm not, you know, commentating the entire time. So now I just need to find the landing pad, which is pretty easy, I already see it. And I'm gonna take out some of that forward translation just to make sure. Uh, you can land so that all four of your uh, like landing pegs land up with those four dots, but I find that you don't have to do that. It's maybe a bit more elegant to do it that way, but you don't have to. So in fact, I'll try to purposely land off of them just to demonstrate. Let me just translate a bit. Well, so I'm technically within all those. Um, but if I lifted up and rotated a little bit and landed, it wouldn't matter if all four of my dots were touching inside of those. So now I can go to missions and I can upload the data. And once that data is uploaded, I will have the, uh, the, the mission is complete. So I don't want to save that. And when you complete a mission, you get money essentially, and you get some experience as well. Money can be spent to fix any damage. So if you accidentally rub the legs on the ground, um, you can do damage to the vessel. As long as you don't do that too aggressively, you won't destroy the vessel. Uh, but if you, in that event, you could come in here and you could click repair and it would cost some of your money to repair. But you can see in my case, I have 100% integrity, but I did use some fuel. I didn't use any of my canisters. So I have all those still, but for now I'll just hit refuel and it will top me back up. And then that's basically it. Uh, now I can go in and choose another mission. Um, I will say also, once you have completed a certain number of missions and you have a certain amount of experience and a certain amount of money, you can come into the shop and you can upgrade your vessel, which I've done because I've spent a bit of time playing this game lately. But for example, you can get uh, increased fuel efficiency, which I think I've already gone to level three on that. Uh, you can have uh, increased RCS. 
it looks like I have room to buy uh, one more level of increased RCS. Uh, you can also get better stabilization so that when you're yawing the vessel or you're pitching the vessel, it will kind of kind of has like a dampener built in so that it won't keep you spinning and spinning and spinning. When you first play the game, there's no such thing and you don't have any of that dampening built in. So, you know, once you start rolling and pitching and yawing, it can get a bit disorienting. So it can help to have some of those stabilizers. Uh, what else do we have? Um, it, it, we can also have additional thrust and there are different items that you can bring with you as well. All right, so uh, that was about 15 minutes. I am interested in doing a couple more of these missions, but I will go ahead and record those as separate videos. Uh, if you liked this look at uh, Lunar Flight, please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.